Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Now, if you've ever wiped out your laptop or your desktop and reinstalled Windows, and then had to sit down and go to each application vendor's website, download and install one after the other application, you know that that can consume an entire day to get your desktop back to where it needs to be. For the IT professional, this is compounded many times because they don't have one desktop to do this. They have maybe 150 desktops. So any solution that Microsoft could provide that would make this more cost effective, reduce its complexity, is a welcome feature. And Microsoft now offers Windows Application Package Manager. It's a utility called WinGet. And whether you're a home user that's supporting just a few PCs in your house, or you're a power user that supports both family and friends, or an IT professional that's supporting 150 to 350 PCs, WinGet can really help you reduce the time, the complexity, and especially patching and updating of your applications. Microsoft did launch the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store. And in it is a Windows Package Manager with a central repository for third party as well as Microsoft applications. This should have been the answer to home users, power users, and even potentially built-in features that the IT professionals could use. But Microsoft wanted to charge all those application developers a certain percentage of their sales of those applications. That went real well. Now in the last few years, the Microsoft Store has gotten better, but you can't automate it, so you can't script it or use any kind of automation tools for the IT professional for deploying applications. It's user-friendly for users, but it's not helpful at all for the IT community. And of course, it never has the third-party application you need. So what do we need? We need a Windows Application Package Manager that's open source, free for developers, is secure, is easy to use on any desktop, can be automated, and we now have it. When get. Because Microsoft took so much time to get here, there were other companies that got here first, such as Chocolate, which is an open source. It has both paid and free command line Windows application package managers with a very nice repository of third-party Windows applications. There is Scoop. There's also Patch My PC. There's Night Night. So we're going to demonstrate many of these solutions to getting applications on, installed, configured, repaired, and most important, patched. Of all the command line package managers and repositories of Windows third-party applications, the largest is Chocolate. This is a great, easy-to-use tool that allows you to deploy, configure, install, manage, and update and patch your Windows applications. Over 10,060 unique software packages on the Chocolate repository. I'm going to spend most of my time introducing you to WinGet. It's a command line application package manager utility. It's open source. It allows users and admins to discover applications, install applications, upgrade applications, and automate all of this. Now, will WinGet solve all your application problems? No but it's going to be a wonderful tool set that's going to help. So what do you need to get WinGet running on your Windows operating system? You need at least Windows 10, 1709 or later. You can go to the Microsoft Store and you can find the app installer and go ahead and install that on your PC. You can also go to PowerShell. You can take what you see on this slide, 
copy and paste it into a PowerShell that has administrative rights, and it will automatically install WinGet onto your PC. Now, in order to learn how to use WinGet, we need an environment to play with. We need some operating system in which we can install applications and do this kind of work. And in most cases, we we know we don't want to do it on our production desktop. Now we could fire up a virtual machine or we could grab a spare laptop and do it on that, but I've got a better way. It's called the Windows Sandbox. It's perfect for playing with WinGet. Now you have to install Windows Sandbox and I have done so. I'm gonna go ahead and you'll get an icon like this once you install it. And we'll just double click. And what's beautiful about this is it builds a duplicate copy of your operating system that you're running right now without all the applications and it presents to you and you're ready to go to use this as a test environment. Now we still have to get WinGet on our Windows Sandbox and then start downloading applications and doing all the fun things that you can do with WinGet. The beauty of this in test environment is that once you shut down this Windows Sandbox, all of those applications disappear. And when you fire up your Windows Sandbox, it starts all over clean, just as pristine as I started it the first time. Now the technology behind Windows Sandbox is quite amazing. If you would like to watch a video I did on it, you can either use the QR code or you can go onto Tech Savvy Productions on YouTube and search for Windows Sandbox. And I will explain in that video the technology that Microsoft did in order to create this Windows Sandbox. A lot of the technology that's built into the Windows Sandbox on your desktop is the same technology they use in Windows containers or Docker containers on your Windows Server platform. In the video description, if you're looking at part one and you're not a member of Tech Savvy Productions channel, you can download a text file that's in the video description and you can just simply open it up, copy all this code and commands. We'll go to our Windows Sandbox, we'll find PowerShell, and we'll run it as an administrator. And once I get my command prompt, I'm just going to paste all that in. And I should have WinGet here in just a minute. And there's my prompt back. And I'm just going to type in WinGet and just see if it pulls up my help. And there's my help. So I know my application installed. I'm ready to test with WinGet. Keep in mind, when you shut down Windows Sandbox, everything you've done is removed and launch it again, you'll have to do this each time. But it gives you a great environment in which to play with Chocolate, Scoop, whatever application package manager you want to without impacting your desktop. Now, if you do decide you're going to install it on your production desktop, you can simply open up a PowerShell with administrative rights and simply install this PowerShell module called Microsoft.WinGet.Client. You'll get some prompts because you're downloading from the PowerShell gallery. So make sure that you give a yes on each of the prompts and it will go ahead and finish the installation of WinGet. Once that's done, you can just simply type get-package and if you see the Microsoft WinGet client in your list of PowerShell packages on your workstation, you know you now have it installed. Now, this is a list of all the WinGet commands and most of them are pretty common sense. Things like install, upgrade, uninstall. So a lot of these are real easy to wrap your mind around as far as using WinGet. I'm not going to go through all of them. I am going to go through installing software, uninstalling software, listing software that's on your PC, as well as displaying software that's in the repository. And then we're going to do an upgrade. Of this list of commands, the two commands that are extremely powerful are the import and export, where I could export a list of all my applications on a PC and then import that list into another PC. So I could simply duplicate these applications from one computer to another. That is some really nice stuff. Now, once a developer has written the software that they want to sell or 
uh, put online so you can use. They then go out and buy an installer or they use an open source installer. And that software will help them take their code and make it easy to install on a Windows platform. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's a long list of different companies that allow you to buy their products. Some of them are open source, but these all are developer tools to take their code, wrap it in an installer so that it will install. So WinGet will support many of these. Common installers are things like EXE, where it does a silent and silent with progress flags, zip files, INNO, a null soft, both of those are open source. MSI is Microsoft, APPX is Microsoft, and then MSIX is the Microsoft Store. And then Wix has a tool called Burn, and then you can have portable apps which don't modify the registry. They don't really install, they just run. Now, if you're curious as to what kind of software is available for WinGet to install on your Windows platform, simply go to winget.run. And here you can search all the packages that are in here, and you can look at various packages to see which one is of interest to you. Here I've clicked on the search box, and you can type in the name of the package, the publisher, the description, or a tag. So if I type in in the search box text editors, you can see it pulls down a list of various available third-party software packages that match text editor. I can view all results and I can just scroll down here and see all the various text editors that WinGet can download. Now, if you were a developer and you wanted to add your software to the WinGet packages, you would go to this location, the WinGet-PKGS, and this is on GitHub. If you want to take a look, you can go to manifest here, double click, and all of the software is listed in alphabetical order. And if we come down here to M, we can double click and we can slide down to Microsoft. We can see which packages Microsoft. So here's Microsoft. All of these are packages from Microsoft that are on this site that are available for download. Oh, I see Bing wallpaper. Man, I've always wanted Bing wallpaper. Now I can go back to the PowerShell client and I can just type in WinGet, search, and I can type in keywords. I could say just M and wildcard, and it will go to the repository, pull down a list of any that meet that search criteria. Very nice. So it says it didn't find any package. Let me just do M, go back here, get rid of the wildcard, and see if there's any software. And there's a lot of software. I didn't like my wildcard. You can see this is pulling down the list of all the packages that begin with M. I scroll it back up to the top and you can see here is the name of the package, mail and calendar. This is the ID. I can install it by ID. I can install it by name. Here's the version and the source. And this is actually from the Microsoft Store. As we speak, WinGet uses two repositories, one Microsoft Store and two the GitHub site. Sometimes it's helpful if you're able to pull down an entire list of all the software, the ID number, the name of the software package, the version, what repository it belongs in, and then dump it into a text file. So you can do that. We'll use two different commands, one for the command line environment and one for PowerShell. I'll have them displayed on the screen too. The first one for PowerShell is this one. And there's some specific characters that you have to have after the dash Q. But once you do that, then you can go ahead and redirect. I'm going to redirect this to E drive, my software list dot text, and I'm going to hit enter and with that string of characters and a redirection to the path and the file name. It's now going to put that file with the list of all the software. Now I went ahead and typed in notepad and the path to the text file and we'll just go ahead and open it. And so here you can just scroll through and see all the various names of the software packages, the IDs, the version numbers, what repository they're in. So this gives you a nice handy list that you can use. Now in command prompt, the characters that you need to do this same thing are slightly different. I'm going to type them in. So you need to do this in terms of your arguments and switches and parameters 
in order to get that same function. And then you can redirect it to a path and a file name, and it will do the same thing in command prompt. So this feature has to be slightly different in command prompt versus PowerShell. So when you do this, you're gonna see there's about 5,000 software packages available accessible via WinGet. Now, quantity does not mean quality. Let's take a look at installing applications with WinGet. Now, the WinGet install command has many parameters. I've highlighted a few that are probably the most interesting and most commonly used. One is the dash H or dash dash silent. So you can install your software in the silent mode. It suppresses all the UI and it just simply installs. More of those options with the WinGet install are dash dash accept package agreement, which probably is important to do if you don't want the user to be prompted to accept a package. No upgrade is very nice because it will skip installing if you already have that same version. And then accept source agreement. So if that package has this agreement, you can also skip that as well. Then you have disable interactivities. No prompts come up on the screen. You don't want pop-ups coming up while the user is on the PC. Just silently install in the background. These are probably the ones that you're going to use most often. Now I've got my Windows Sandbox up. I've installed WinGet. I went into my software text list of all the software packages, found a software package by name, and I'm going to go ahead and install it using WinGet. And I'm going to use a lot of those same parameters that we have already discussed in the slides. I've already built this in my text editor because it's a pain to just type it. I went ahead and pasted it in Notepad because it's easier to see in Notepad than it is in the command line shell. So here we see WinGet install, Windows Terminal Preview, and the default is that whatever string of characters that you put in here, the WinGet will go in and look at the name of the software package, the vendor ID. It will try to find it as a name, as a vendor ID, as a moniker. So we've given it the name of that package. Then we've added the dash dash accept package agreement, dash dash no upgrade, dash dash accept source agreement, dash dash disable interactivity, and then dash dash silent. That's what we've put in that command line, although it's not easy to see, that's what's there. Now keep in mind, Windows Sandbox is anonymous. It's an anonymous operating system. There's no identification to a user on this box. So many times when you do a software package with WinGet that uses Microsoft Store, repository. Microsoft Store kind of likes to know who you are and so it gives you some prompts that you have to respond to because you're going to Microsoft Store. This one's in WinGet. We'll see what it does. Okay, here we go and it's going out to the repository and you can see the little blue icon and, and it came back and said, I see two packages. One is Windows Terminal in Microsoft Store, one Windows Terminal in the repository on GitHub. We're not sure which one you want. So what I'm going to do is instead of giving it the name of the application, I'm going to give it the vendor ID. Now I went back and I looked up the package ID for the Windows Terminal preview. And this number right here is the ID coming from the Microsoft Store. And again, I left everything else the same. The default action of WinGet install is it will search the package name, the package ID, attempting to try to find that string that you've put in there to identify the package. Now I've went ahead and put that in my command prompt and let's go here. Let's see what happens. Notice I told it I don't want any information shown, but it's showing me a lot of information. This one is from the Microsoft Store and we're installed. Now, a word of advice having used this is that you're going to get a lot of unexpected results as you work with each and every software package. They all give you very different results. Experience getting in and trying it and playing with it. You will not be an expert after watching my presentation. You got to get in there and start looking at some of that software and trying to do the installs, the upgrades, and the uninstalls to get a full understanding of what to expect. Let's take a look at a sample command line script or batch file that you can 
quickly write, follow the steps shown in this batch file, and you can automate as many installations as you want. This is simply a batch file, and a lot of this information, like the echo off, echo install, is just information in the batch file. Where you get to the actual action is where you get into when get install, and then we have Microsoft.PowerToys. That's going to install your Microsoft Power Toys. And we have some error level handling, which displays things on the screen, which is very nice if you use this batch file, you get a lot of good information on the screen. And then we come down again, this is just information, rem terminal, and then we're going to do the winget install microsoft.windows-terminal. And you can keep adding to this batch file as many applications as you want. And you can come up to the winget line and add all the parameters that you want. Notice I don't have any parameters here, but you could add all the parameters you want, save it to a text file or a batch file, and you've got a nice tool to add software very rapidly, very quickly. The nice thing about the error level is that they display a lot of information. So if you want to watch the install and see the feedback from each application, this is a nice little quick, easy way to do it. Now let's take a look at the winget uninstall commands. We see that you can use a number of parameters with the uninstall, dash I interactive, dash H silent. You can create log files if you're having problems on installing so that you can determine what may be the problem in the log file. They have an interesting one, dash dash purge, which deletes all files and directories in the package directory. I believe this is for portable. And then dash dash accept source agreements. If that uninstall requires some kind of acceptance of the, the source agreement. You also have dash dash wait, which will prompt the user to press any key before exiting. Again, the idea of a batch file that can do this automated for you. You can see this is the same batch file, except I'm just now uninstalling. And again, you could add those parameters. You could also add as many applications in this batch file as you want. You can save it onto a flash drive, carry it around with you to uninstall whichever package you want, throw it on a network share so you could get to it remotely from the network. And here's a sample of, of the batch file that I created as it uninstalls different packages. So here's an example where I did an uninstall of the, the Microsoft People app. It came out flawlessly. And then I decided, let me see if it will uninstall Edge. You know, this is the holy grail of Windows. So I tried to uninstall Edge browser and uh, it, it didn't uninstall it. Now let's talk about, as we look at Windows uninstall, how can I get a quick list of what is installed? And I can do the winget and simply do list. And this winget command will allow me to see all the software that is on this PC. So I can see the package name, the package ID, I can see the version, and I can see there's an available upgrade for Microsoft Edge. And I can see the source of where that package came from. This is nice. If I'm going to do an uninstall, I simply just do a win get list and I can see exactly what I want to remove. In my sample, I've simply said win get uninstall and I chose the Windows Media Player. So I've added that into my command line and let's go ahead and let's remove it. Go figure. So for my example, I did win get uninstall and then I chose the any DVD. So I put that and let's go ahead and enter. Now, if we want to uninstall any of these packages, here's where we need to be very specific and use the parameter dash dash ID dash dash name before we put in our text string. Otherwise it has, for whatever reason, it just doesn't want to seem to find it. So I'm gonna type in winget uninstall, and then I'm gonna go dash dash name, and then I'm gonna remove the, the DVD player dash free. And now I can hit the enter. So when I ran that, it didn't like this dash in the DVD player dash free, which is what it shows in the list. So I've come down, shortened it, and it says it still can't find it. So it balked when I tried to uninstall it with the dash free, and when I removed the dash in the free, it still said it couldn't find it. So I'm gonna try the ID. So this time, three is a charm. I've 
added the ID for the DVD player dash free. And let's try it again. Again, you have to play with this. You see every step I just had until I played with it enough to determine what was it looking for to uninstall this program. So WinList gives us a great view of what's already on our PC, as well as available upgrades. We have version for upgrading this particular package, which is very nice. So I can see what needs patching, what needs upgrading, because the win list will go back to the repository, say there's a newer package that will upgrade the one you have on your machine right now. Now we're wrapping up part one of this video series. Part two is going to be covering WinGet upgrading software. We're getting ready to start part two. We're going to get into many other topics, which I'll discuss in just a minute. Part two is available for our channel members. So you can become a channel member by simply joining Tech Savvy Productions. It's $2.99 a month. You can even join for one month and get access to all our membership content. You'll have access to video notes, slide decks. Mr. Vanderpool, why are you making people become a member in order to see some of your content? There's a simple answer to that. Our cost to create this type of video content continue to rise. The revenue that we get from YouTube ads, which will allow us to run free, is continuing to decline. Every content creator on YouTube is faced with the same problem. Our second issue is our viewership is relatively small. How many people want to watch detailed technical content videos? Very few. So that small audience, we don't get a million views on our videos. If we did, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Because our videos have a low viewership, we have only X amount of people that watch them, we have to depend on that group to support the channel. In our part two of this series, we're going to show how to use WinGet to upgrade all your apps that are supported by the repository. I'm going to show you how to use the pin command. So if you have an application you don't want to be upgraded, you can pin it. And then we'll get into the two most important commands is the import export, where we can export a JSON file indicating all the software we have, say on a master PC, and then export that JSON file, and then import that JSON file into another PC or 20 PCs or 30 PCs and duplicate that third party software install. And because of security, I'm going to show you two ways you can build your own application repository. A lot of companies would get very nervous going to GitHub to get applications. So you can build your own repository, put your own apps in there, and then use that entirely internal within your organization. I'm going to introduce you to Chocolate, and you'll see it's got many more third-party apps than what Microsoft offers you. There's even a GUI version of Chocolate. And then if you support family and friends, you know how important it is not only to keep their operating system updated, but all of their applications. Now I'm going to show you how to use Patch My PC, which is free for use at home, how you can set it up so that it will automatically patch any family or friend that you support. It will automatically patch their applications on the schedule that you so desire. It's awesome. And consider becoming a channel member. You don't have to become a channel member for life. Do it for a month, for six months. Any small contribution that you make helps us and allows us to keep producing content that you enjoy.